Today I'd like to introduce my guest, pharmacist, Dr. Masood Rashidi. Thank you for joining us today, Masood. Oh, uh, thank you for having me, Linda. I uh, appreciate the time and uh, it's always good to be in your program. And I have to say that you also a volunteer and we thank you for that. Now, you. you were saying before we started that you were working with some pain specialists using ultra low dose naltrexone. Can you explain the talk that you give? If a pain specialist came to you and said, I know nothing about LDN, how does it work? What do I have to do to prescribe it for my patient? without putting them in withdrawal? Uh, you know what, uh, we started with a couple of pain uh, clinic that's, I can tell you what we did, and then we'll still continue doing that with uh, if any doctor comes in and asks us the same question. I've been, uh, so uh, we work, we, the first question we ask is, is your patients on opiates or not? Because that's very big to know if they are on opiates. Uh, then we need to start a much lower dose. And as you know, like start at ultra low dose or kind of microgram dosing instead of just a regular low dose naltrexone. So that's the first question. And if they don't know much about it, then we go a little bit more into detail talking about uh, the differences between the two, because uh, sometimes, you know, it's just hard to uh, let them know, okay, there is a difference between the ultra low dose. You can still use it with the uh, opiates. It's been working well. People won't have as much of the uh, withdrawal symptoms with the opiates. If they start with the low dose, it's going to be a mess and they may not ever want to continue. So, and then also we'll bring out some of the patients that we've had experience with and what we've done. So I kind of uh, give them the uh, information how it differs from ultra low dose to low dose. And then of course the regular naltrexone dose, that's where we start. And then um, we help them with the dosing a lot because a lot of doctors like, okay, what do I do now? Okay, I have a patient. I, I like to kind of work with them a lot just because they come in and uh, a physician asks, okay, what, what do I do now? So we'll go through the patient's history and find out what they're on, what they're doing. And then we come up with the uh, ideal dosing that uh, the, they need to be on and then we'll recommend it. And if the doctor's okay, then we'll go on from there and making, because we do a lot of different dosing. So it kind of helps to uh, like bring that up to the physician or the prescriber just so they know that there are so many options. There's not just capsules. We can do a lot of other stuff and different uh, how low we can go and how high we can go on compounded products. Mm -hmm. So if the doctor has a patient on a hot pile of painkillers, and many of them are on several different painkillers, not just one, um, and they want to try to wean them off and to get them onto LDN. So they will need to start obviously on ultra low dose. What would be the, a generalization of a protocol? How low do you start? How quickly do you titrate one up and one down? Could you explain that to us? Sure. I mean, we usually start with one microgram, uh, especially if they're on several different painkillers and they're just have been on it for many years. Uh, just a, one microgram. And then uh, I use, I usually recommend using the liquid just as suspension, just because uh, we can do like about 10 mics per mil, 10 microgram per milligram, and then start them from point one and just bring them up. We usually say as tolerated, but I, when we are in microgram dosing, I try to get it every week, try to get them up like quick, kind of a little bit quicker than the two weeks. And it has worked for a lot of uh, patients that we've worked with. So we do 0.1 ml, which would be one microgram BID. We do it twice a day instead of once a day. Uh, so we have started them twice a day just because it's such a low dose. Most I've seen when people get like about five microgram, uh, they kind of tend to feel the uh, uh, 
few ultra low dose that it kind of helps them especially mostly what we hear it just uh it kind of helps them with more of the pain relief than especially with the one that they even take all this opiates and they're not having pain relief they get better pain relief and then also psychologically and mentally they feel better they kind of uh that they're not as anxious that's what i hear from a lot of them and then that's when we get to five microgram twice a day and we go up from there the right that's where we see some of them drop one or two doses of the opiates up to when we get to 10 microgram we get more of people dropping a dose or two uh so it's been that has been our experience and i've worked with a couple of uh big pain clinic and they have seen the same result they were really excited to um uh, start this and they're just putting more and more people because as you know all the doctors now they're trying to get people off of opiate just because all the issues that are going on and all the addiction and it's going on and it's been i mean we've been lucky to have uh the ultra low dose and getting a lot of information especially as it's good to always listen to your <laughs> uh, uh conferences and learn more from the doctors that they come in and we, i mean they did what it inspired me really about the ultra low dose was the uh documentary you had on your uh LDN research trust on uh opioid crisis and that was like where i watched it a few times and then kind of uh, talked to other pharmacists and physicians and got more information on it and then we started uh talking to you know prescribers about it and it's it's been great i mean and Every time I talk to a doctor I'm like go watch that documentary I send them a link I'm like it's free you can watch it because it gives you a lot of information that you kind of want to see from the patient's perspective from the doctor's perspective it's it's a great uh uh tool for me to kind of get them interested and excited about it because it's it works I mean I've seen for a lot of people works very well So how so, long do you think um just recapping what you say so start on um one microgram increase it if all is okay weekly by one microgram when they get to five they usually notice they're getting better pain relief meaning that the opioids are actually more effective and then they can start to titrate the opioids off now how quickly does that happen i mean are they able to reduce it weekly fortnightly how would you say you know the the seesaw goes yeah it's actually it's not the yeah, i mean it's it really patient dependent as you probably know but then a lot of times it it's not a quick just okay let's get off of opiate tomorrow because it does take a while i mean i have seen people like take about 6 months to almost 6 to 8 months to get like most of opiates out and they're just getting close it depends on how much they're taking too there are people that they take like i don't know 30 oxy and 20 norco and there are so many different things that they take by the time we you bring them down to lower dose but honestly like by 10 microgram i'll see when they do 10 microgram twice a day we see some um uh reduction on the opiate use and that's a lot of times i hear it's just voluntarily they're like oh i forgot to take my afternoon one and i didn't even really feel the difference so i just stopped taking it after that but usually uh i always tell the doctor the patient please be patient with this this is not something that i'm going to start and tomorrow i'm going to put all the opiates away because that's going to hurt you because we want to slowly go up slowly go down so tight rate up on the opiates and then uh i mean tight rate down on the opiate and up on the ldn so kind of as you go up you go down on the opiates which which i think about 6 to 8 months that's where you almost if the patient want willing and working with you and calling us because i always tell them please call us because we need to work on it because if you're going too quick you may not get the good result if you're going too slow let's just work but why to get back to your question i think about 6 to 8 months that's where really get a lot of good result and a lot of reduction on opiates but mm -hmm. not really quick but again it depends on we're going up what weekly or 
twice a week, I mean, every two weeks or how the patient tolerates the increase as well. Well, that's, I don't know if I answered the question right. Yes, about. it's very helpful for people because everybody wants a magic pill. Everybody wants things to work instantly. So what you have done is actually explain to people that patience is needed. Um, I mean, especially people that are dependent on opioids. The last thing we want is to put people into withdrawal and then en ending up in ICU. <clears throat> I know a lady who had that problem. She told the prescribing doctor, I don't take opiates. I don't take any. And she did. And she, she went on LDN, you know, starting, I think, in those days at three milligram. And she just went into withdrawal. She was rushed into hospital. Um, but she thought it was OK not to tell anybody she was taking opiates. Oh, my God. So, uh, yes, that is you know, the last thing we want. Yeah, that's something actually happened, uh, not the same way, but then uh, when you ask, are you on long acting or short acting? Because that makes a difference too. If you're on long acting, how quickly you can introduce the actual low dose. And then I've had a patient who told me, oh, I'm just taking like the short acting and I just take one in the morning, one at night of the regular oxy. And then we start them on like, you know, okay, so maybe you can just, separated with the LDN few hours like and then just take it and then when he started it's like oh I'm having all these issues I'm like can you please uh, tell me all your medication I need a real list of your medication when they send it as you said they were a lot more than what they were saying they're on and unfortunately I'm like you know I can't help you if you're not honest with me because you need to mm -hmm. tell me and tell your doctor and whoever is helping you because you know there's so many doses we can help you but we need to know really what you're on it's a very good point that you brought up it mm -hmm. has happened to us too and it's just sad because the patient is the one who's suffering because mm -hmm. he didn't tell us or she didn't tell us the uh, real dose that they're on or what they're taking exactly and nobody has a crystal ball you have to go by the facts that you're given so it's always really important to remember all the facts and be completely straight and upfront. Nobody is going to criticize you or tell you you've done things wrong, you shouldn't have, et cetera, et cetera. It is what it is. And that's the starting point. You know, that's not where they're going to always be, but we need to know the baseline and then move forward. And it's the same, um, I don't know whether in your uh, pharmacy the Sinclair method using that for alcohol addiction and that has proven to be remarkable I mean have you got patients on full yeah. dose naltrexone for the uh, Sinclair method yeah we have not many I, I've uh, tried it like a couple years ago with couple we had actually one of our patient her, her sister had like a lot of issues with the alcohol. And then we started her on and then she moved on to a different state. And I, I don't know, I've talked to the sister. She says she's doing really well. Um, unfortunately, we don't do a lot of, uh, but I've uh, talked to doctors. I know some of them have used the Sinclair method and it's, it's very amazing how it works, mm -hmm. but I don't have much experience on it. We didn't do a lot of them here in where we at, at least. Because it's not just dependence on opioids, alcohol, is it? Yeah. It's alcohol too. And it's far easier to get hold of alcohol than it is uh, yeah. opioids. I don't know what it's like in the US. I'm sure it's the same as it is here, that you can just go in any supermarket or any gas station that has got a license to sell alcohol. It's very easy to... To get hold oh, of yeah. and i mean it's it's addictive um one thing we did like uh you know with one patient they were taking like every time he had to go to a party or somewhere that he knew there was going to be alcohol he would take a 1.5 milligram ldn like right before going there and he kind of reported that he's reduced his out so he would go and then still drink but maybe one alcohol one 
you know, cocktail or two instead of he used to do six or seven. So mm. it has helped him a lot. We've had one patient that we did that and then he just carries like, you know, uh, some people pill the narcotics. He does it when, whenever he goes somewhere that he knows there's going to be alcohol and he's that kind of calmer and not wanting it as much as, you know, he used to drink before. So, I mean, any addiction, it's LDN, even with food addiction, you know, LDN works. Like if you're, if you have any kind of addiction, we've seen good result with the uh, low dose naltrex as well. Mm -hmm. And you were saying the different forms that your pharmacy uh, compounds LDN into, would you like to go through those for us? We do, uh, so most common one, of course, everybody uses is capsules. We do a lot of capsules, but we do different uh, fillers pay based on patient preference. And uh, also we do uh, suspension in oil in uh, or in like uh, aqueous form in the water uh, uh, form. And then also we do uh, lozenges or trochies, whatever people call it, different things. So sublingual form, which a lot of times helps with people that they have GI issues like, uh, uh, and they can't take the capsules or something as a filler bothers them. We've seen really good results with the trochies. And the good thing about trochies, sometimes you can do a higher dose and they can cut in four pieces when you do larger trochies. So that has helped just to, with the titration, if you make it like four milligram, then they get one milligram, two, three, four, uh, by the time they get to the full dose, that has helped. But one of the biggest one that we've had really good success is the topical with uh, autistic kids. That has been like really good result just because, um, with autistic kids, you know, as you know, they're really hard. What form of, uh, you know, sometimes they don't like the oil consistency. Sometimes they don't like the taste. But with this, it's been like really helpful with the parents because they said, oh, what when they go to stay by, just put it on their wrist and they don't even know we're using it. And they can tell the difference when they forget to put it one night or something with the kids. So it's been really good because it's just so quickly you can apply and it works really good and they don't have to worry about just, you know, uh, making more uh, stress on the kid, just trying to have them take it orally. And that has helped a lot, especially a couple of doctors when they found out we can do that. They've been really interested and they've been using that a lot more often. Mm -hmm. So is your pharmacy sterile and non-sterile? Yes, we do yeah. both. So do you do the LDN eye drops and the nasal spray? We do the nasal spray, but we have not done eye drops just because it's a lot of uh, regulation in California. With that, we need to have a lot of different studies. I haven't found a very good uh, like you know, way to uh, get that on board. I've, I've taught thought about it and, and I really want to do it. We've been looking into it hopefully soon, but we haven't done the, uh, the eye drops yet just because it's a, a little bit different in California and in some other states that we have to follow a little bit more guidance and rules in here. Mm -hmm. So hopefully soon <laughs> we're thinking about it. So, Well, I've, I'm told they're very good for dry eye. Um, actually during lockdown, I started to get gluey eyes in the morning. My eyes were very, very gluey and I had to wow. bathe them and I couldn't focus properly. And I was diagnosed over the phone. <laughs> we still can't go and see somebody. Um, and it was a nurse prescriber and she said that I had a dry eye. Ladies or people of my age, can have that, this problem supposedly and <laughs> uh, even though she said you probably don't think your eyes are dry and they don't feel dry but I've got ordinary whatever they are eye drops and I, I must admit uh, they probably would work better if I remember to take them four times a day which you, oh, you're meant well. to do um, but they, they are better and I was thinking how cool mm. would that be if I could get LDN eye drops, you know. But, uh, yeah, have you got it? Oh, you didn't get it yet, no? No, we, we, it no, yeah. we, 
we can't get eye drops in this country. We don't have compounding oh. pharmacies like you have. They have to be made in special labs. Um, oh. And obviously, it, they'd have to be made in bulk. And they'd be very expensive yeah. and not used before the sell by. So that would also make the price top prohibitive. Yeah. But maybe one day when I go to the US, I might be able to, to try some LDN eye drops. Yeah. Exactly. Soon, when you start uh, traveling back, right? <laughs> With this, oh, all goodness. this uh, stuff going on. <laughs> Hopefully, and, and when is that going to be? <laughs> <laughs> I've got no yeah. idea. No idea. So, uh, really interesting how LDN has come on in the last. Um, Dr. Mark Mandel, as you probably know, we're going to miss him terribly at the conference week on Friday. And that was in 2013 when he helped with the first conference in the, the US that the LDN Research Trust um, organized. And the difference between 2017 to now 2021, what has happened in that time? I mean, it's amazing. And I still get people say, I went to see my rheumatologist or dermatologist or gastroenterologist and they've never heard of LDN. You know, I know that. It, it's really hard. But this is why we need pharmacists like yourself that help and educate uh, prescribers because you get one pharmacy who has, say, 10 potential LDN prescribers, doctors that they fill prescriptions for, you get the, them on board. They then start prescribing it to their patients. <clears throat> and of course, there's probably patients weekly that they can prescribe LDN for. They then talk to colleagues who have not heard of it, who, and that's how the ball gets rolling, isn't it? How you get more and more people involved. So I would say it's going to be really exciting in the next five years, what is happening. So, yeah, it's like, uh, as you said, you know, we get calls from some, I get random calls from doctors from all over, just all of a sudden, it's like, can you tell me about LDN? I'm like, where are you? I've never heard of you, but then I'll go and talk to them and they get excited about it. We do like, you know, a lot of Zoom calls now just because we can't go. And it's been like really uh, rewarding because they get a lot of patients under control and helping them with all sorts of different things. So we do a lot of uh, low dose naltrexone or ultra low dose and it's been really good. And I've been telling people, I mean, if you want to know more, just get on the conference that's coming up in less than two weeks, probably. <laughs> and uh, it's just going to be exciting because you learn a lot more there. And it's just uh, great. Uh, that's how I started learning about it, like years ago when you had it. And then now uh, we just keep continue learning more from these different speakers. It's a great place to uh, learn. And I've had quite a few doctors that are interested and hopefully they learn more and tell their colleagues, as you said, and that always happens. They tell, talk to each other, patient talks to their doctor, doctor calls us or doctor talks to doctors and they call us again. So it's been pretty good. I mean, it's, it, I'm glad that we can rely on your, um, all, all the speakers that you have and, you know, they, they're always helpful and it's been great to work with the whole LDN yeah. uh, community I mean, everywhere. Yes. So there is a lot of misinformation out there and we try and make sure that everything we give is factual, backed up by research and clinical experience from, you know, our speakers, advisors. We always put the good of the patient first, you know, um, the LDN Research Trust was started by patients. So, it is really a, a patient driven thing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah exactly. really uh, amazing. Well, thank you for sharing your experience with us today. Sure. And we will have to have you back again another time. Sure, thank you so much and have a good afternoon and take good seeing you again. And hopefully we'll have some more coming up soon with your conference.